Dave, in the meantime, let's welcome in Dr. Chuck Bishop. Good morning, sir. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. It's uh, wonderful to have you on the program, I believe, for the second time. First time we've spoken to you since you uh, were initially hired. As you get uh, this new school year uh, underway, uh, Chuck, you have uh, obviously a whole new challenge ahead of you. You came to us uh, from Virginia. And uh, if you could uh, uh, maybe compare and contrast, uh, tell us what some of the differences and what some of the similarities are between the, uh, well, the two jobs. Sure. Well, the, the big thing that I've said since I started was the teaching and learning is the same. It doesn't stop at a state line or a county line. Uh, so in terms of the teaching and learning process, it's, it's the same. I mean, teachers are working with students and trying to uh, uh, help them develop uh, socially, emotionally, and, and academically. So, so that's the same. The biggest difference, I think, is um, personnel law in West Virginia is very different uh, than it is in Virginia. And then just the uh, overall amount of legislation that is uh, related to education in uh, West Virginia is uh, more than uh, we had in Virginia. So um, it is, uh, it, it's been a great transition, though. I have a wonderful team of people that I'm working with. They've been incredibly patient with me, and, and uh, I ask a lot of questions. And some of those at times might seem to be a little crazy, but I, I want to learn and uh, serve Jefferson County and our students and our families and our community in the best way possible. Do you have a head count for the number of students in the Jefferson County school system to begin this school year? We're right around 8,300. 8,300. Is that an all-time high? Uh, no, it's actually down just a little bit. So, uh, uh, you know, generally speaking, um, you know, even from day one to day two, uh, we had a, um, a number of students who enrolled the second day of school that weren't in attendance the first day. And um, that will increase, in my um, experience tells me that that increases even after Labor Day. Um, you know, people who move into a community sometimes don't even realize that, uh, that school started uh, or they're moving into a community late and uh, uh, they end up enrolling in, in school. So uh, right now we're right around 8,300. And, uh, you know, if we look forward to welcoming some new students, if, uh, if that's in the cards for us. What is your vacancy situation with teachers, uh, school aides, the bus drivers, cafeteria workers? Well, uh, we have uh, been very fortunate. Our HR department has worked extremely hard. Uh, at the start of last week, uh, we had 34 uh, professional vacancies, uh, and now we have two. Uh, those have uh, been filled by substitutes uh, during the first week. Uh, now, some of those positions have been filled by long-term substitutes. Uh, we have some retirees who have come, in, come back to help us. Um, uh, bus drivers, uh, we were short a handful of uh, drivers this year, and our bus garage and our transportation department has worked uh, incredibly hard to uh, consolidate routes and to make sure that uh, our students could uh, uh, get to school uh, every morning. So uh, overall, uh, we're in a pretty good place, uh, but certainly um, there's not a huge applicant pool um, of candidates out there if we were to lose somebody at this point in the year. I have Delegate Mike Height here, and Mike, I know you're not on the Education Committee, but I, I do also know that the Capitol has tried to address this situation with bringing retirees back because of so many shortages that we have so that they don't eclipse the number of days they're allowed to work, and this, this uh, maybe helps to alleviate some of this pressure that we're getting. Uh, are you making progress in that area, Mike? Yeah, I think we are. Um, I, we've looked at this over and over, and there's, a, there's some talk about you know, this being double-dipping when you bring in some retirees, and, and I just didn't see it that way. And I, I think there's a lot of legislatures down there that, that don't see it that way. Um, that you're going to be paying um, a retiree their retirement and you're going to be paying a teacher whatever you're paying a teacher if they're two separate people. So I don't understand why they can't be the same person, um, especially when you're getting somebody with the, the amount of experience you're getting. Um, so I, I think the legislature is working on that and, and trying to get that result. And Dr. Bishop, before I go to Bill Stubblefield here, I'll give you a chance uh, maybe turn the tables. You can interview Mike Height here a little bit here as well if you have any, <laughs> any questions for him as to the West Virginia legislature. 
<laughs> no, I, I mean, I'm in this uh, uh, listening and learning process, as I said to you when, when we spoke, uh, when you answered the phone this morning. I'm on my way traveling to uh, uh, a meeting of regional superintendents today, so uh, uh, they asked me if I had an agenda item for today, and I said, no, I'm, I'm going to listen and learn these uh, this first meeting at least, see what's going on. If I, if I need to add something, I can, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll let Mike off the hook this time uh, are you and, sure uh, we, uh, we got a heavy spotlight yeah, here I, if you want to I turn appreciate the screws. that well <laughs> I, I tell you i i totally agree with what he said with respect to retirees in the legislature uh because not because i'm just in the superintendency in, in jefferson county but you know some retirees work a part-time job anyway uh you know to, to help uh offset living expenses etc so why not take advantage of their uh, expertise and, and experience and allowing them to continue to serve uh, students all over West Virginia? Uh, so it's, uh, I, you know, with 100 percent support, um, any effort to uh, uh, have our retirees return to classrooms on any, regardless of the, the length of the term, um, because they do bring a lot uh, to the table. Bill Stubblefield. Uh, good morning, Dr. Bishop. Uh, you mentioned differences between Virginia and, uh, and West Virginia, uh, two areas, personnel, law, and legislation. I'd be curious to hear mm -hmm. more about both of those, but let's start with legislation. You implied that there is more legislation w in West Virginia as a, uh, impacting the schools in Virginia. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, in, my, in my opinion, there is. Um, um, it seems like every time we, we turn around to get ready to have some conversation about a particular issue, um, you know, I'm reminded, well, we have legislation related to that. Uh, personnel with the grievance process, uh, levels one, two, three grievance process is different. In Virginia, you could um, uh, file a grievance, but it was not as formalized as it is in uh, West Virginia. So, um, you know, to give you specific examples, um, uh, the grievance process and the, and the personnel uh, legislation is is probably the biggest thing that I see that's uh, a bit different. And it's a difference between a, a, a state where uh, unions are active versus uh, Virginia where that's not the case. Okay. Do you find the legislation to be uh, the larger amount of legislation to be uh, advantageous to you, or is it more of an impediment to what you try to do? Um, I don't find it to be onerous at this point. Uh, you know, it's just making sure that I'm following the law. I've, I've done this. Uh, I've, I've been a superintendent in Virginia for 18 years, so I've always tried to do things the right way uh, within the, the limits of the law and and uh, respond uh, to situations uh, as the legislat legislature would have us respond. Um, sometimes one size does not fit all. Um, you know, there's there is some flexibility. We had a situation recently with a, a kindergarten a kindergarten student who was born after July one, and um, Jefferson County does have a policy in place or standard operating procedure or protocol in place, which would allow for some testing of students who don't meet the age criteria, and um, we tested that student and and allowed him to enter school because he tested in the 99th percentile. Um, even though his birth date was in in uh, August, uh, so that that flexibility I appreciate. Um, any flexibility is good to allow us to uh, be able to uh, um, better serve our communities and 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 not make it a one size fits all approach. Have you had the opportunity? I know you had a busy few months trying to get coming coming into West Virginia and uh, preparing for the school year. Have you had the opportunity to meet uh, the bulk of the legislators? I have not. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I have not. I've yeah. had some communication by phone uh, with a few legislators, mm -hmm. but uh, I have not had the chance mm -hmm. to do that. I look forward to, to, uh, to that in the future, though. Certainly. As a legislator, I'll say that, um, you know, as a legislator, I'll say that we would appreciate hearing from um, people in your position um, if you have suggestions in, in laws that need to be tweaked or, you know, things that could make things more advantageous for you. So if that ever comes about, you know, please reach out. Um, okay. And, and the other thing, I, I want to go back to the, the retirement situation and uh, tell you one of the issues that we, we ran into 
with that is um, if you bring in a retiree and you, you put them back to work, um, do they pay into their retirement system like they had before? Um, right. and, and I don't know if they do or not. And that was sort of the, the big question. If they're not paying into the retirement system because they're drawing on their retirement, then you're losing all out on money that an individual who wasn't retired would be paying into it. So there was that whole dynamic of the retirement system itself um, hurting because you're hiring retirees. And we sort of have to work out that situation as well. Um, just to, you know, to put out there the whole dynamic that, that, you know, hiring retirees, it's not just as simple as, as, um, bringing them back to work, but you know, that's, that's for the legislature to try to figure out. <laughs> Agreed. And, and I'd, I'd like to also know, you know, what are some of the, the challenges that you face as you come in the new guy and, and the guy that's in charge of a whole county system, what are some of the challenges you face other than, uh, the hiring and lack of lack of teachers in your area? Well, the, the biggest thing coming in, and this is actually the fourth time that I've had the opportunity and the pleasure to transition to a new community to serve as a superintendent. So uh, it's uh, not foreign to me, uh, the, the transition, although it was between from one state to another. The biggest thing that, that you know, I, I lack is the institutional knowledge and things that have happened in the past. Uh, it seems like when something pops up, um, I'm, I'm having to run to somebody and say, okay, tell me the backstory on this so that I can address this appropriately, appropriately or have an intelligent conversation with somebody about the issue uh, so that I know the facts and, and uh, the details. Uh, but that, the big thing is the institutional knowledge, knowing the, the community, knowing the, uh, the, the players in the game, so to speak, uh, with um, uh, the different local governing bodies, of course, our uh, legislators in the community and in the area, parent groups. Um, so th those are some of the challenges. But the only way to address those are to put yourself out there and to, uh, to ask a lot of questions and to listen to, uh, to people and, and try to learn as much as you can. You mentioned parent groups, and I don't know how much you've met with actual parents in West Virginia now. Do you see any differences between the parents here and, and their mindset as opposed to the ones that uh, you've dealt with in the past? No. Uh, you know, parents uh, want what's best for their child. Uh, and, and that doesn't, uh, like I mentioned earlier with the teaching and learning process, that doesn't stop at a state line uh, or a county line. Uh parents you know they send us the best they have every day uh their their children are the most important thing to them and uh you know by and large parents want their children to be educated uh and want them to be educated at a high level so um you know i, I don't really see a difference between parents parents advocate for their kids sometimes we have disagreements about um processes or procedures there's or things that occur uh but but overall uh, the parent groups that I have met with are very supportive of the schools. They're very supportive of our uh, of our students and our staff. Uh, so uh, that that's not any different than I've experienced in the past. You you mentioned that uh, unions a while ago uh, uh, that West Virginia does not have unions for teachers, whereas West Virginia is fairly strong. Uh, have you had any? Uh, uh, what has been your experience up to this point in time with work with working with the unions? Well, in terms of our, our local um, you know, groups, um, I've already have a meeting schedule with our local education associations and uh, both for professional and service personnel. Uh, or the service personnel, we're in the process of scheduling. Um, unfortunately, I've had uh, a couple of uh, uh, disciplinary hearings this summer that I've had to attend to, and I've met some of the uh, representatives, union representatives, through those processes. Um, but... Uh, to this point, that's been it, um, um, and you know we'll continue to work together. I, our union reps want the exact same thing that we all want, and that is for our, our, our employees and, and students to have a great experience at school uh, and in their employment, and um, uh, they, they want the best for our children. Uh, 
Prior to the uh, start of the school year, I think starting last year and all through the summer, we've been anticipating great shortages among both the teachers and the support staff. Uh, we had the superintendent of Berkeley County on a couple of so days ago, and uh, he said that the uh, shortages are much reduced over what he had anticipated. Uh, from what you say, you're experiencing the same thing in Jefferson County. Uh, that has to make your job a lot easier coming in with a better in, uh, better, a uh, larger workforce than what you th- fear them you might have. So. Absolutely. We did have a little bit of uh, compression that we had to go through uh, in terms of some high school scheduling um, and, and reducing the number of sections that were offered, which, which means that we have more students in particular sections that did, uh, that we could staff. But they're not unreasonable uh, student-teacher ratios uh, at this point. Uh, so, no, it does make it a lot easier not to have to worry about uh, who's going to be in that classroom the next day. Kids need stability. They need consistency. They need a high-quality uh, educator in their classroom. I've always believed in my career that the teacher is the most important resource in any classroom. Uh, take out the technology. Take out all of the other devices. Uh, a, teach, a great teacher uh, in a classroom, kids are going to learn. Uh, so it does make our jobs a lot easier, not having to worry about who's going to staff that room the next day. What is your your desired teacher-student uh, ratio? Well, uh, obviously at the elementary level where kids are building foundational skills, uh, you know, if you can keep an early elementary classroom to, you know, 20 to 1, 18 to 1, that's an ideal situation. The question is, can you fund that? And can you find the, the, the people to, um, to be able to staff that kind of ratio? As you get to the high school level, uh, low 20s to 1, sometimes high school schedules become unbalanced. And in one class, you'll have 24 or 25. In another class, you might have 17 or 18. But that's just based on student course selections and how the master schedule plays out. So we could stay... You know, 20 to low 20s at, uh, at worst, um, that would be ideal. Dr. Chuck Bishop, our guest on the program, he is the superintendent of schools in Jefferson County. New gig for him. This is his uh, first full school year with Jefferson County Schools. We've done segments on discipline in schools in uh, West Virginia over the last two weeks. And uh, some of these discussions have gotten to be quite fascinating. And uh, maybe you could uh, enlighten us as to how these things are handled in Virginia and uh, if there's a difference in how they're handled in West Virginia in regards to children who cause distractions and the ability to make sure those distractions are either eliminated or minimalized so that the kids who really are, are there and want to learn can learn, Dr. Bishop. Well, the big change, I think, this year in West Virginia is the uh, piece of uh, um, uh, legislation that allows uh, for a teacher removal of a student from a classroom uh, after uh, um, an issue of, uh, um, you know, a discipline situation. Uh, We've had that uh, over in Virginia for, we had it in Virginia for the last five or six years. Uh, what I've found is that that rarely happens if there is some uh, issue with a student um, that, you know, we, it goes through the regular discipline process and the, the student is removed or is returned to the classroom. Um, the legislation or the, what we're working with in West Virginia is after three occurrences that there could be some adverse um, action taken. Uh, with a student uh, in terms of whether or not that student can t- could continue in that class or if there's some other discipline that would be appropriate. So, um, you know, you, staying on top of the discipline is interesting setting or is, has, is always interesting. Setting the expectations for a classroom uh, is paramount for our teaching staff. Uh, and generally speaking, if, if kids know what the expectations are, uh, most of them, uh, we'll meet those expectations every day, and discipline is not an issue. Uh, when you have those occurrences where uh, somebody violates the student code, uh, the, uh, student code of conduct, uh, then uh, we go through the process, and, and uh, the student receives whatever the discipline, um, whatever discipline is appropriate. 
I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that that piece of legislation is is beneficial, that uh, there was a lot of debate about that, and, and I was glad to see it pass. And I, I'm hoping that it, it helps uh, the administration with, with those issues. Another piece of legislation that we passed is the, the aids for the first, second, third grade um, group. And I was wondering if you've been able to take advantage of that and hire in some of those aids that are available to you now. Uh, yes, sir, we have. Uh, our K classrooms and uh, first grade classrooms are all um, staffed with ECATs. Uh, we will phase in the stuff, second and third grade uh, in the coming years. The, one of the little nuances that affected us was we had some, stu or some uh, uh, staff members who were serving as bus aides on some of our uh, school buses move into that classroom setting which required us to then backfill the bus aid positions. So it, it wasn't uh, new hires in the classroom for the most part. It was uh, staff that was already uh, on board and just uh, wanted a different position, a different opportunity to work with kids. And um, were, they applied for and were hired in those new ECAT positions. Uh, and again, that did create a little bit of an issue. We were able to take care of it, but it um, created some issue with having our uh, bus aides then um, positions vacant, and we had to hire those. There were some complaints uh, specifically from at least one Jefferson County Board of Education member in the past that Jefferson County Schools was promoting kids who had not completed coursework for a grade, Dr. Bishop. What will your philosophy be about that going forward? Well, retention... Uh, for the most part, uh, research indicates is, is not successful. Uh, generally speaking, what I prefer to do is if we have a student who is being um, considered for retention, then uh, we pull together a multi multidisciplinary team uh, of educators and include the parent to have some conversation about whether a, another year in the same grade or um, if it's an elementary student, uh, would be beneficial and how? Um, because we know what research says about retention. At the high school level, it's a little bit different if a student doesn't pass a particular course because that course could be required for graduation, which might mean that the student has to retake the class. Uh, so it, that is situational in my opinion. You have to have some conversation with the education team, the parent, uh, and, and talk about, you know, how is, if a student is repeating or considered to be repeating for second grade, uh, how is second grade going to be different for that student next year? Uh, we need to really make sure that we have a good understanding of what uh, it will look like uh, if a student is retained. Dr. Bishop, final thoughts are yours here this morning. Anything you'd like to relay? No, thank you for having me. We've had a great first week of school uh, overall. Uh, we had a few uh, issues here and there, uh, but it's been great to have students back in classrooms. I've visited uh, schools this week. haven't made it to all of them yet because of other uh, obligations, uh, but the schools that I did visit, kids were happy to be back. Uh, teachers were welcoming kids into their classroom, and uh, I've always loved school and the first day of school, and uh, uh, it was exactly what I would have expected it to be, great staff welcoming some great students and uh, getting ready for a wonderful school year. Thanks so much for your time this morning. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Dr. Chuck Thank Bishop, you, new superintendent of schools in Jefferson County.